Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sheer Palace the U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty hailed the strategic relations and partnership between Bahrain and the U.S., as well as the development and growth of bilateral cooperation in all fields, especially in military and defense. His Majesty welcomed the guest and his accompanying delegation and reviewed the historic ties and means of bolstering them. His Majesty affirmed that Bahraini-U.S. relations are based on trust and mutual respect, as well as joint keenness on achieving bilateral goals and interests. The two sides exchange points of view on a number of regional and international topics and developments of mutual interest. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the efforts of U.S. Secretary of Defense in increasing Bahraini-U.S. cooperation in all military and defense sides. His Majesty the King also noted the vital role of the U.S. administration in establishing the pillars of security, stability and regional and international peace and its keenness on bolstering cooperation with Bahrain. The U.S. Secretary of Defense expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and his efforts to enhancing relations and cooperation and commended Bahrain's role as an important partner in increasing security and stability in the region.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Skhir Palace the GCC Secretary General Dr. Nayef Al Hajraf on the occasion of his visit to the kingdom. His Majesty reviewed with Dr. Al Hajraf several Gulf issues, especially in regards to boosting GCC action to achieve the aspirations of GCC people towards further development and prosperity. His Majesty commended the pioneering achievements that have ma been made by the Council to reinforce GCC joint work and increase its effectivity to further reinforce comprehensive action. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Secretary General and all the staff of the General Secretariat to push forward GCC work and strengthen cooperation among member states towards more gains in all fields. The GCC Secretary General expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for commending the work of the GCC, asserting the vital role and efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain to expand cooperation in addition to its supportive contributions to further develop Gulf actions. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Zainal, chaired the weekly session in which, in which the session discussed a number of parliamentary committee reports, including the Services Committee report. It also discussed a parliamentary committee's report, including the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee report. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Zainal, sent a cable of congratulations to member of the Representatives Council, Adil Asumi, on his un uncontested election as Arab Parliament Speaker. She stressed that the achievement reflects the big strides made by the Kingdom of Bahrain in democratic work and its remarkable presence in the Arab arena. She added the accomplishment also underscores Al Asumi's role at the Arab level, and it is a recognition of the Kingdom's big strides in the democratic march. The Minister of Interior and the Chairman of the Committee to Counter Extremism, Money Laundering and Terrorism, General Sheikh Rasha bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain enjoys a special legislative environment based on the best practices in the fields of finance and the economy at a time when Bahrain is enhancing its competitiveness in all fields. The Minister said that Bahrain's attainment of first place among Arab countries represents yet another victory for the country thanks to the complementary efforts of all members of Team Bahrain. The minister highlighted the distinguished legislative infrastructure of Bahrain that is based on the best financial and economic practices. He said that the kingdom's compet competitiveness in achieving its development goals are the result of the vision of His Majesty the King. He said that Bahrain had topped many indices of regional and international organizations because of its distinguished potential and strong foundations in many fields. He stressed that that dedication of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince is in the interest of the nation and its citizens. The minister affirmed that the role of the relevant ministries and authorities, including the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, the Central Bank of Bahrain, and the various directorates of the Ministry of Interior, of which have played a role in this national achievement. He added that the Kingdom is dedicated to promoting its efforts through its membership and financial action task force and the Middle East and North Africa financial action task force. He asserted that Bahrain would continue to meet counter money laundering and terrorism financing goals. In light of the deep-rooted and brotherly relations between Bahrain and the UAE, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, participated in the ceremony organized by the Ministry remotely to honor the winners in the local qualifiers for the fifth edition of the Arab Reading Challenge. The Minister of Education delivered a speech in which he hailed the distinguished brotherly relations between the two countries and their continuous cooperation as a result of their leaderships. He expressed appreciation for the initiative of the Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, to launch this leading project at the level of the Arab world, in affirmation of the importance of reading as a main source of knowledge, culture and openness into the world, and for its role in expanding students' perception and developing their skills in thinking, expression and creativity. The Minister expressed thanks to all the participating students in this year's edition at the local level. The minister noted the efforts of the ministry in promoting reading and research by including daily reading classes in various school stages. The top 10 students at the kingdom's level were honored. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs launched a workshop titled Human Rights Diplomacy in Promoting and Developing Human Rights, which was held remotely under the patronage of Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, who delegated the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani, to inaugurate it on his behalf. The Foreign Affairs Minister delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and gratitude to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak for patronizing the workshop and expressed appreciation for the support the Ministry receives from His Highness. 
The minister stated that the ministry's role and responsibilities are not limited to protecting the sovereignty, independence and interests of the kingdom, developing cooperation with various world countries and exerted efforts to achieve security, stability and sustainable development, but also includes strengthening the pillars of the kingdom's strategy in achieving justice, equality and law, as well as spreading the culture of tolerance, coexistence, acceptance and establishing the values of peace and brotherhood among nations. Dr. Zayani added that Bahrain managed to implement many leading initiatives and projects in the field of human rights. As a result of the Comprehensive Development March of His Majesty the King, the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, which provided an environment that protects human rights. He noted that the ministry is keen on deriving its human rights diplomacy from the visions and directives of His Majesty the King to establish a country of institutions and law according to main legal constants that were embodied in the National Action Charter. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in the Sixth Leadership Excellence for Women Awards and Symposium, Liwas 2020, which was held through a virtual format under his patronage, with the participation of a number of officials, specialists, technicians, and academics from around the world in the field of energy, and with the support of the National Oil and Gas Authority, Society of Petroleum Engineers, Gulf Refining Union, Babco, and Saudi Aramco. The Minister of Oil affirmed the continued sponsorship of the activities of Liwas, which dis demonstrates the care and support enjoyed by women in Bahrain, from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the government. The Minister also praised the efforts made by Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, and her keen keenness to promote the reality of women in the kingdom. The minister stated that the forum is a scientific and practical platform for learning from women leaders who have made remarkable achievements in various fields and communicated with their counterparts in the energy sector. In line with the latest updates, which are periodically assessed and based on the recommendations of the National Medical Task Force for combating the coronavirus, indoor dining services at restaurants and cafes resumed on the 24th of October, capped at 30 customers per cafe or restaurant. More on this report. Restaurants in Bahrain are now open for dining, according to the decision of the National Task Force to combat COVID-19. Dining establishments have to adhere to precautionary measures to be able to receive customers, which cannot exceed 30 customers dining in at the same time and are subject to social distancing guidelines. Mall Director of City Centre Bahrain, Mr. Adaij al further explains. The precautionary measures that have been taken so far is we try to minimize as much as possible any contact uh, point and reduce it to contactless if possible. Those that are not possible, uh, we uh, implemented the disinfection uh, processes as, as directed by the government directives. We've taken actually a lot of measures. You can see some of them around us here in the food court. For example, we reduced the number of tables and chairs to provide the social distancing required as per the directives. We've also installed acrylic partitions um, for the single seaters on the benches as well as between the tables in, in the food court. Again, that is to provide comfort and safety to not only our patrons of the mall, uh, our visitors, our customers, but also to our staff. Uh, any table that has been used will be immediately disinfected and, and prepared uh, for the next customer's use. So this is in terms of the food areas. In terms of um, uh, the shopping center, we have provided the thermal cameras on the entrances that automatically measure the temperature of guests walking in. And we've also provided uh, hand sanitizers at a lot of points, all the entrances and exits, at the entrance and exit of the food courts, and we've instructed our tenants as well to provide them on the entrances of their retail units or their, their F&B units. So there's plenty of opportunity for, for people to disinfect. This is, of course, in addition to the washrooms where people can go and wash their hands with, hand and, with soap and water uh, and, and basically feel comfortable coming to a place like this uh, and having not to worry about disinfecting or having a clean and safe environment to be in. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, the government uh, for all the uh, support they have provided us, um, uh, especially with providing us with all the guidelines and, and, and initiatives, and they were very open in discussions with us on, on, on what needs to be done. So they were not just directing, but they were also listening and providing us with feedback. Meanwhile, restaurants, directors and staff affirmed their readiness to receive customers in line with social distancing guidelines. 
We uh, table distance two meter bet between the tables. Uh, we sanitize the table before and after uh, customer sitting. We take the temperature for the, for the customer. 30 customer only allowed to enter the shop. Five person only in one table. Uh, we use uh, plastic cutleries. We use a QR menu. All our staff, uh, including chefs, wearing a face mask and uh, face shield also. Washing the hand every 30 minutes, sanitize the hand also. I'm so excited that restaurants are reopening because I finally get to enjoy the foods we love and the foods that we miss the most with our relatives. I can't wait to eat the yummy food, but just remember to be safe. The National Task Force to Combat COVID-19 underscored the importance of continuing to observe social distancing guidelines by limiting interactions with individuals outside of one's household, only being in public when necessary, wearing masks when in public, and assuring others around are following all health guidelines. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,028 with 289 recoveries and 232 registered new cases. 51 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 172 are contacts of active cases and 9 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.